What's up guys, this is JT at Exxon. I hope you guys do remember the Great American Eclipse on the 21st of August 2017. Now, in case you have already forgotten, it was a total solar eclipse visible in the band spanning from the east coast to the west coast of America. It was even partly visible from as far as Europe and Africa, as well as the far east of Asia. Now what makes the eclipse so special is not only its degrees of totality and span, but also other things that were made visible because of its happening. You see, during the day, the sunlight blocked out everything that was supposed to be visible, and as night comes, our part of the Earth faces another direction. Therefore, there are a lot of things that we are missing out up there. So a solar eclipse creates the perfect conditions for sky watching because it blocks out the suns and reveals other celestial bodies. And in this, during the Great American Eclipse, Mars, Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter were all visible in the sky. The star system Regulus was also revealed. Now for your information, Regulus is the brightest star system of the constellation Leo. But that is not all. Something else also made its grand appearance, and we know for certain it is not any of the celestial bodies mentioned above. Why? Well, take a look at this photo here, taken in Idaho. As you can see, there is a cosmic object at the directions of 5 o'clock. It is not any of the planets we mentioned above, because Regulus was visible to the rise of the suns. Mars and Venus were on the upper right corner while Jupiter and Mercury was on the upper left. Well, of course, you can argue that this can be any celestial body out there or even a lens flare, which is unlikely though, because this photo was taken in area of totality with an x filter with a x glasses with ISO system of 1600. So that leaves out with the other arguments, that this can be any cosmic entity, but then, Take a look at this photo. This was taken from Italy and the planets or whatever it is appeared much bigger and more visible. We know it is the same object because it is at the exact same locations and the photo you see actually have been super enhanced so you can see the dim light that this road system of planets radiates. And it makes perfect sense because the light is crimson red and according to an insider who used to work with the Hubble telescope, the approaching system of planet is made up of a lot of iron oxide and therefore if we can see it, it is going to be red. Now I'm not gonna talk too much about the Hubble insider here because we have extracted one of the interviews in an audio you can find later. Now I'm just going to show you guys some other footage and photos from the clip that I think are incredible and are very concrete evidence that the growth system of planet X is on its trajectory toward the Earth and is really very close. Now, these zoom in ones were taken from Anchorage, Alaska. Next is the video clips caught in the city of Panama, Florida.
Now as you can see this time here there is an object on the other side of the sun symmetric with the object that was supposed to be planet X at the directions of 5 o'clock. At first it was unclear what this was. It could very well be a lens flare or a sun dog phenomenon. But after some analysis with clarity enhancements and saturation adjustment, it is revealed to be another source of light. A reasonable that because of the angle and light, the camera somehow captured the reflection of mirror. Of course, I'm not a light physicist, so I can't explain that in detail, but I just know that such illusions or reflections is possible. Another explanation that sounds a bit more dire is that there is more than one celestial bodies up there interacting with our solar system. In these situations, it is unknown what the indication might be for us here on Earth or when we may feel that effect. So a good advice is keep looking to the sky for any anomalies. Okay, next I want to show you guys this photo. This is a chart made by an astrophysicist from Kyoto. Japan. He has actually done a considerable amount of investigations into post and wobble and things like that, and he actually calculated and pinpointed the positions of planet X based on the footage captured on the solar eclipse. So here how he calculated it. First take a center spot on the sun and extend the line down to planet X. Now before we continue, just for your information, the distance from Earth to the sun is called one astronomical unit or 1 AU for such. Planet X turned out to be 0.84 units from the Earth. To put that into perspective, Venus is 0.72 AU from the Sun, or equivalently 2.28 AU from our Earth. From here, take the down distance from the center point of the Sun, which is 1.04 AU and multiply that by the distance from Earth to Venus. That would then give us a fair equation, which placed planet X roughly 440,000 km below the ecliptic plane. The next step we need to do is to take the diameter of the Sun, which is a million three hundred and ninety-one thousand. Time that by the distance to the right of the Sun in addition to the distance between the Earth and the Venus, and the result is 340,000 km to the right of the Sun. Okay, summing up, the system of planet X is 340,000 km to the right of the Sun and 440,000 km below the ecliptic. Oh, and by the way, quick explanation, the ecliptic is the plane where the planets of our solar system orbit the Sun. It is basically like a plastic on which the planets rotate. The system of Nibiru is rising up to the plane. Well, it's hard to say rise or fall in space, but what I mean when I say it is rising to the ecliptic is that it affects Earth from the direction that we here on the Earth call the south. That is why it is more easily spotted from the southern hemisphere. In fact, a lot of space observatory in the southern hemisphere as well as in Antarctica is rumored to have the main purpose of keeping a lookout on planet X. And yes, you have heard that right. Unless you are a newcomer to this issue, you probably have already known that NASA and the authorities have known about the system and the approaching of Planet X in at least 1983. And of course, they have been keeping the public in the dark because the knowledge of an imminent doom which would lead to social and economic breakdown. One of the most obvious effects of gravity from other planets or celestial body is the tides of our oceans. And you will see the effect clearly from the historical retreating of the waters along the coast of South America on the side of the Atlantic Ocean in Brazil and Uruguay. And simultaneously, the crossing of waters into the source along the Pacific coast of Chile and the other western edge of the continent.
Another sign of the incoming of gravity is, is the increase in the wobble of the Earth, also known as the tilt in the Earth's rotating axis. This have clearly been observed by families around the world as well as the areas in the far north polar region, from where the change in the sun's and moon's position can be seen most clearly. In fact, you can find one of the old interviews with the Northern Indians in our previous video on the topic of Earth wobble. So do that when you have the free time, and I'm not going to be too lengthy on that here. In the meantime, extreme climate activities are engulfing the planet. What we can see most obviously at this moment is the global heat wave, which is shattering temperatures record on every continent. 48 degrees in Europe and over 50 degrees in North America, Africa and Asia is setting uncontrollable Wi-Fi across the land which hundreds burning in Europe and even inside the Arctic Circle. And the biggest one was in Athens, Greece, and it killed almost a hundred people. In Japan, 22,000 people have been sent to the hospital because of the heat shock and what is worth noticing about the case of Japan is that only a week or two before the heat wave, the country had experienced one of the worst floods in its history, killing more than 200 people and making thousands have to evacuate. From inside the Earth, the core is also being stirred up as seismic and volcanic activities rise steadily. Forty volcanoes are aggressively active and almost every single one in the rings of fire is showing signs of coming back to life, including the infamous Yellowstone Super Volcano, which could potentially kill almost 100,000 people immediately and make 7 million square miles of American land instantly inhabitable. Too much volcanic eruption can also cover the planet in the layer of ashes and sulfur, bringing which is a nuclear winter as well as a downpour of acid rain. The majorities of life on Earth and human civilizations might disappear even before the system or system of planet X arrive. This is legitimate threat because the volcanic eruptions go one out of the six mass extinctions in the Earth's history, as well as contributed a great deal of destructive forces in another one, the famous KPG extinction that wiped out the non-avian dinosaur. To sum up what I've been trying to say, the neural catalysm will start long before the planet X is here. In fact, it might have already started.
As we all know, tide is one of the terrestrial phenomena that shows the most obvious effects from gravity. Extreme tidal movements that we call king tides and spring tides are behaving abnormally and such abnormality has been increasing steadily over recent time. Since tides are caused by the gravity of the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon's gravity cannot increase. The rise in big tides can only measure that there is an additional source of gravity influencing the earth. And what is this source of gravity, you ask? Well, unless you're a newbie to the issue, you would know immediately that I'm talking about Planet X, also known to many as Nibiru. Just for the sake of those who are not caught up, Planet X or Nibiru, or sometimes Nemesis, refer to a system of a rogue planet and seven orbiting entities and debris field, which is on a very weird orbit around our Sun and is currently approaching the planet Earth from below the plane where known planets orbit. This approaching object is agreed and calculated by many, from us to renowned scientists like Carlos Mondoz Ferreira. Even ancient scripts of many civilizations pointed to this object, and everyone came to the same conclusion, that its survival will spell doom for the majority of life and human civilization on Earth. Of course, the mainstream media, as well as governments, will not let you know about this. Like most important events, the public is kept in the dark for the sake of crowd control, and therefore, we can only depend on leaked information, as well as the signs from the physical world around us, to know what is really happening above us. Events like these enormous and abnormal tides were not also often reported. The receding water of 2017 had almost fell into oblivion until another such event took place again earlier this year. You heard that right? This is not a once-off event. It is becoming more normal and is a harbinger that we are supposed to keep an eye on. This time, the water receded from North Carolina and hit upon Massachusetts. Now, first of all, take a look at this footage taken from Massachusetts. It looked catastrophic, didn't it? Yet, in the meantime, Carolina was bone dry. As large tides become more normal, it becomes more obvious and undeniable that something with a considerable gravitational force is approaching, and it is exerting its gravity upon the Earth. But tides are not the only evidence that we have for this occurrence. You see, celestial bodies can push other bodies, and this case is no exception. Even though the Earth is not being pushed out of its orbit, it is being pushed off its axis. What do I mean by that? Well, the Earth wobble has been increasing for more than a decade now, back since at least 2005. Wobble refers to the tilt in the rotating axis of the Earth, and this phenomena has been observed as the shift in angle of the Sun, the Moon, and other cosmic bodies as seen from the Earth. We have farmers from many places in the world confirming the rise in wobble, and there is at least a certain degree of validity to their words, because farmers have to watch the Sun, the Moon, and other signs in the sky to predict weather and take care of their crops. It's part of their livelihood, and they are experienced in the activity, so there's no doubt. We should be worried about what they have observed for the years. Additionally, you might have known, or at least guessed, that they are not the only group of people that see this tilting. If you want to see changes in celestial bodies most pronouncedly, you should probably go to the edge of the Earth. And by that, I mean the polar circle. And not so surprisingly, the Inuit elder of the Arctic have been noticing this for years. I have to let you guys see an extract of an interview with these people several times, but here it is once again for your convenience. Now, 
Now, let's put some figures to the observations of these people so that you can see the degree of seriousness of the situation that we are going through. Before 2000, the sun rose at the position of 4 o'clock and set in the position at 8 o'clock. However, by 2005, it rose at 3 and set at 9. It doesn't stop there. In 2014, it rose at 1.30 and it set at 10.30. So, the positions changed already by two and a half hours. That's a lot. It's much more tilted now. Note that all these positions are taken during summer, so there's no seasonal change involved. The gravity of the inbound planet X is also having a profound impact on the core of the Earth. The magnetic and gravitational field of this rogue planetary system is causing changes under us that are clearly observed via the sudden and dramatic increase in seismic and volcanic activities around the world. I'm not going to talk too much about volcanoes here because we have two separate series of videos on volcanoes that you can find and watch in your free time. You just need to know virtually the whole ring of fire in the Pacific Ocean is roaring back into life and currently almost every volcano on Earth are showing signs of reawakening. Earthquakes are also becoming very common and frequent. The most recent major one was in Mexico last year and it was in magnitude 8.1 and the frequency of many areas has reached as high as thousands of earthquakes in one single day. And that's not all we need to be worried about because over the earth there is cracking. Fissures are opening up everywhere and it feels like one of those scenes from a doomsday movie where the surface of the earth has broken into pieces, swallowing everything in its path from life to human civilization into a hot burning magma core below. Okay, it's normal to have fissures once in a while, but we're talking about a global scale this is happening on. The one attracting most media recently is probably the 100 foot wide fissure that cracked up the Grand Teton National Park, right above the magma chamber of the system of the Yellowstone supervolcano. Again, I have talked a lot about that so you can watch it in our previous videos. There's a whole series on the issue that we're still keeping an eye on, so we'll keep you posted. Back to the fissures. Watch the following footage taken in Saudi Arabia last February. This was discovered on the 28th of February and we don't know when it exactly opened up but it was astonishingly almost 200 meters deep meaning that you could fit two thirds of the Eiffel Tower into it. Another occasion of this phenomenon is in Luto of the province of Cumbavilcas of Peru. And it's not one fissure that cracked up in the ground, but a whole system, as the surface of the area was crushed and torn apart. I was astonished myself when I first watched the following video. So guys, prepare yourself, because what you're about to see seems straight out of the movie 2012. 